This ranch had eight homesteads on it about 1900. And I found this property in 1956. I found that it was uh, badly abused. The, the big problem in the history of this ranch is the fact that they overgrazed down to the dirt and the little trees were everywhere. So the first thing I did was start putting in gully plugs to try to slow the water down because it was eroding, the, the sheet erosion was bad. The gully erosion was terrible and in the process got rid of a lot of these trees that were sucking up all the moisture. We have 3,500 acres here and we normally run 100 cows, 35 acres to the cow. But now we're just a cow-calf operation with a wildlife almost the major part here now, so we're in pretty good shape. When I first came out here, I was a city girl. I had never lived anywhere longer than about two years. And being here on the land, making connections with why you do things and how you do things and what the results are, really became very, very obvious. What impressed me most was the the number of things that a rancher and a farmer have to know. I, I was very impressed early on. Well, the first thing I did, I bought an old dozer and I started pushing these junipers and piling them and, and burning them and, and opening up the country. They were so thick, you could hardly ride a horse through them. And what I tried to do was to get rid of the exact amount it took to bring back the grass and yet preserve the aesthetics of the property. I ended up visiting this rancher in Rhodesia. In the process, I was fortunate enough to hear Alan Savory discuss short duration grazing to a group of Rhodesian ranchers. Now he's, he travels all over the world uh, making presentations about how to cure the problem of desertification. He claims that cattle are not only necessary to do that, but they're vital. And while I was there, I learned all I could about short duration grazing, and it made a lot of sense to me. And then I came back home in 1970, and I refenced the property and got enough pastures to, to do the rotation. And it's, it's so simple, but planned Grazing is very important to carry out holistic management. And this time of year, if you've had rain, the whole country gets a black tone to it with the grandma grass heads, and that's what we all like. I've gone in a direction of what the wildlife prefer. We've done so much of the uh, habitat improvement that is one, one way we not only uh, attracted the wildlife, but we increased the carrying capacity of the ranch. When I came here, there was an old homesteader shack. I tore that down and, and built a cabin. The first year, my wife's uh, uncle was interested in hunting, and they came, and from that time on, that cabin then occupied every hunting season. It's, it's been a, a boon to us financially, and it makes me feel good to see what happens after the work you've done is finished. The land is what makes us a living, and we love it, and we are proud of it, and we will continue to take good care of it. Sid is just, to me, he's the epitome of conservation, management. He's done a really good job on this place and it shows and people see it. They do notice it. We're really flattered that, that, that we got the award and, and we'll cherish that from now on. One thing it means is the satisfaction that I'm treating what God gave me to take care of in the right way. And he's he's tried really hard to be thorough about what he does, how he does it, and share that. The conservation has to be a state of mind. You've got to want to do conservation. 
to do it right.